When I was growing up, the one thing I could do well was draw. My mother, on the other hand, started to worry a bit that all of that drawing might lead me to think that I was going to be some sort of artist, painter, sculptor, whatever. And I think she made a comment at one point when I was very, very young that unless I were as good as Picasso or Michelangelo, I would surely starve. So she suggested that I think about using drawing in a profession, either engineering or architecture. I asked her what engineers did, and she told me, and I said, therefore, I'm going to be an architect. She said, but I haven't told you what architects do. And I said, I don't care. I'm not going to be an engineer. I think the next day, I was out on the street drawing the neighbor's houses. Luckily, I went to a public school that had drawing and got so intense at the end that they were inventing courses for me so that I wouldn't get bored. I think probably I was not very well informed about architecture and what it really could mean to uh, the, the cultural domain until I went to Rome. Understanding architecture through a different kind of lens, once you look at the work of an early Roman temple and see the role of the floor, the ceiling, the wall, the column, the roof, the window, hits home in a way that you say, aha, these are my nouns and verbs and adverbs. These are the elements of an architectural composition. These are the elements that finally give you character within the work. And it is that way of thinking that the compositional attitude that one carries into every project is one that uses the richness of all of that, that they all ultimately related to the human scale. And it is that that is so intriguing about architecture for me. Things stay fresh because of the questions they ask, not because of their style or their momentary attraction to new materials or a new way of doing something. New doesn't interest me in that way, but new gets middle-aged and old like the rest of us.